Now let's see how we can use PCR technology to sequence DNA. I will remind you that genome project, which was basically sequencing human genome, 2.7 billion US dollars were spent to sequencing human genome. That's how important it was. It took 13 years to sequence the human genome. Let's see how we can sequence a DNA segment using PCR technology. First of all, let me introduce you to the DNA nucleotides once again. We are familiar with ribonucleosides. We are familiar with the deoxyribonucleosides. Here I'm going to introduce you a new type. This is D dioxy, di deoxy ribonucleoside. As you know, the carbon atom number three has the three prime hydroxyl, which is required for extending the DNA, DNA chain. If the three prime hydroxyl is not present, the DNA new nucleotide cannot be added to the growing DNA fragment. So we use the D di deoxy ribonucleosides in a PCR reaction for sequencing. Let's see how that is done. We make four different types of di deoxy nucleotides, one, one for each base present in the DNA. And special thing about these di deoxy ribonucleosides is that they contain a glowing molecule for which is specific to each base. For example, C here is red color, G has blue color, T has green color, A has yellow color. So these di deoxy ribonucleosides will always have a molecule attached to it, which will emit yellow color. T thymine will have a molecule attached to it, which will emit green color, and G blue color, C the red color. So we run our PCR reaction, we have the template DNA, we want to know what is the sequence of this DNA strand. We have a primer, we have little bit information about this DNA fragment, we have to know the little sequence so we can design the primer. The rest of the sequence we need to determine. So we add these components, the normal components for PCR reaction, the normal nucleotides and the enzymes and additionally, we add these special di deoxy ribonucleosides attached to these, their relevant glowing molecules in a very, very small quantity compared to the normal nucleotides. Now, when we run the reaction, these bases are incorporated in at random. Say, for example, we had our primer and it was ex being extended. Here, the primer has annealed. This is the primer sequence. There's the three prime hydroxyl. The next base here, whatever base that is added here would be the base that is complementary to this question mark. So when the base is added, if it is a normal base, it is fine. But if it is one of those special bases that we talked about, di deoxy ribonucleotide bases attached to a specific color, the reaction will stop right here. Okay. So we will basically generate a band. DNA band, which is short, let's just for the sake of argument say it was A. So actually, let's just say it was a G. That will make our life a little easier. Let me erase this. So let's just say that it was A. So we had an A that got incorporated and this A was a special nucleotide. It stopped the DNA chain from extend the primer from extending any further. And now what happened is that we complete this reaction. This procedure is going on at random. In the next cycle, perhaps this chain will grow all the way up till here. And then the next nucleotide that gets added, say for example, G, it will be the special nucleotide. So we will generate PCR products of all the lengths from our starting point of the primer to the last nucleotide. All these bands will be formed with the terminal nucleotide being the special nucleotide. Now, when we run the products of this PCR reaction on a gel, the shortest one will come out first. So in this case, it was a G that has come out of the gel that has this fragment has moved 
the fastest on the gel followed by another G followed by C T so on and so forth so this was the first nucleotide that was added on the primer because it is the shortest one so as we keep on running our gel these DNA strands will start moving this gel is a special type of gel it is basically a column gel it is a glass column at one end of this glass column we have a laser that is going to emit a special light that will make our special D dioxy ribonucleosides glow and we have a detector or a camera here that can detect what color was emitted so the first color that was emitted was blue and we know where the blue color was attached blue color was attached to G then again a blue color was detected that was also G then a red which was C T was then the next was green which was T so you see sequentially as we move along we are determining the sequence of our DNA which can have very significant consequences we need to sequence DNA for various purposes we to detect certain type of disorders to find different type of changes in DNA so we can sequence DNA using PCR technology here I feel pertinent to mention that now things have changed a little bit as I mentioned at the start of this module that it took 2.7 billion US dollars and 13 years to sequence completely the human genome now the same their technologies have already been um, uh, discovered have already been invented that can that can accomplish the same feat in about a day or so at about a thousand US dollars per human genome this is the speed at which technology is moving and now it the day is not very far that we can sequence when we go to our pathologist for a test we can also ask them to sequence our genome for us.